Hey everyone, welcome back to I Teach You Science. We are doing more cluster questions today. This is going to be the second set of cluster questions in this sample. So we'll see what we got here. Again, I'm going to rate them on my subjective scale of 1 to 10. And feel free to pause the video before I actually go over the answer. That way you can get some review and then, you know, unpause and then watch me go over it. That's how I think you should deal with this. All right, here we go. So this one says... Base your answers to one through six on the information below. We got plate tectonics, talks about Alfred Wagner being a German geophysicist and meteorologist who proposed the theory of continental drift. Okay. This theory attempted to explain how similar rock formations and plant and animal fossils could be found on separate continents. Widely dismissed by other scientists, they would eventually be accepted and become known as the theory of plate tectonics by the 1960s, and it's showing a model of the position of the continents. Okay. So what's happening here is there's some mountains here and then it spread apart over time and it split this mountain range. So these mountain ranges used to be connected, but the plates were separating. So that way that mountain chain kind of got split. Use the model to explain how the central Pangaean mountains were separated into the Appalachian and Caledonian mountains. In your explanation, include a spatial or temporal value in which this process occurred. So spatial just means um, over a, like a large area. So we want like a distance. And then temporal just means a time. We just want uh, some sort of time. So we have to include a distance or a time. So I'll just include both so you could see what that would look like. So we could just summarize what we said here. So how were they separated? So we could say the plates diverged over, and we could say, look, 300 million years. There's our temporal numerical value. Causing the mountain range to be split. And then watch this, ready? over and we can estimate look this is 3000 kilometers we need a distance for spatial right so we could say you know roughly i'm just estimating that's probably like 7000 kilometers apart so there i did a spatial and temporal in my answer so i thought that was pretty easy honestly i'd give this a three out of ten pretty easy question all right, going on, one of the methods used to determine the absolute age of a rock is through the collection of zircon crystals. So when you see this, anything to do with absolute age, you're going to think radioactive decay. So we might be able to use the reference table to help us with this. Zircon crystals have been found in some Appalachian mountain regions. They grow in magma or semi-molten rock that are made of silicon, oxygen, and zirconium. Zircon crystals are ideal for age dating because they have the following characteristics. They're found in felsic igneous rocks. They're found in a lot of areas. They have high melting temperatures, high density, but not magnetic. And they contain small but measurable amount of uranium. Okay, there's what I'm talking about. Radioactive decay, which substitutes for the zirconium in the crystal lattice when the crystal grows. Okay, identify one characteristic of zircon that makes it ideal for determining the absolute age. So yeah, we could definitely use our reference table. So we're going to go here. Let's try to find zircon. Oh, so, so here we go. Look, zircon and then uranium. So this is what we need here. Uranium-238 is going to be probably better because it's going to be better for dating the age of the, you know, how long the Earth has been around. But... We also could probably use this uranium because that's 713 million years of a half-life and we're trying to get to something with 300 million years. So that might be a little bit better. But either way, we, it doesn't matter because we're just going to use your, we're just going to say uranium. So characteristic, we're going to say it contains uranium. And then we could just say Uranium has a 
let's not say that. We'll say uranium has a predictable half-life that we can use to find absolute age. That's really all you have to say. So I think as long as you knew that uranium and absolute age meant radioactive decay, this was a very easy question. So I'd give this another 3 out of 10. All right. The model below represents the polarity patterns found on the ocean floor over geologic time. Okay. So we have normal and reversed. Reversed is the white, and normal is this shaded pattern. I don't like how they did different shades of the shaded pattern. I guess that maybe means... I, I don't know why they did that, honestly. I, I kind of don't like it. Which statement identifies the evidence for how the past and current movements of oceanic crust explain the ages of this ocean floor rock? So essentially, remember, if you know anything about plate tectonics, the convection currents underneath these plates are separating it. So this spot here is the same age as this spot here. This is the same age as this spot here, which is that and that and they make mirrors so one two three two three so three is the same age as three and that's the oldest two is the same age as two and that's the medium age and one is the same as one and this is like where the new rock forms on the rift so which one explains this so let's see oceanic crust at the mid-ocean ridge in block diagram a is now the youngest normal rock in c so no because this number one here is number three so that's wrong because it moved out. Ocean crust at the mid-ocean region A is the oldest normal polarity rock in, two, in C. That is correct. We're going to keep going. The reverse magnetic polarity rock closest to the mid-ocean region A, okay, that would be this, is younger than the reverse magnetic polarity rock closest to the mid-ocean ridge in B. No because that would be this, and then this spot is there. So that is wrong. Because it moves outwards, right? So everything in block A is younger than anything later. Um, the reverse magnetic polarity rock in diagram B, so the white area, is the same age as the normal magnetic polarity rock. So if there's reverse and normal, it cannot be the same age. Because they wouldn't be spawned in at the same time. So two is the best answer. That's pretty easy, but I mean, the wording here is kind of wonky. I'd say that's like a five. Yeah, there's a lot of words. Okay, one of the pieces of evidence that Wegner was missing to explain his theory was the driving force for moving tectonic plates around the Earth. Diagram below represents the structure of the Earth and the geothermal gradient, which is the rate of change in temperature with respect to the increasing depth in Earth's interior. Fine. The model is a block diagram of the portion of Earth and the hours represent the motion of the plates. Okay, so let's just look. So it shows a zoomed in version of these, the, the lithosphere, and then it's showing the temperature increasing down to the inner core. So you can see inner core is 7,000, and then up at the crust would be like zero. We got our plate tectonic motions, fine. We've seen this diagram a million times. This is the same diagram, you know, in here. See? At least very similar, right there. Okay, so which statement based on evidence most accurately identifies our current understanding of the driving force. The driving force has to do with the convection currents from the mantle, right? So one of these is gonna be true, let's see. The highest amounts of heat from the Earth's core is cycled by thermal convection in the mantle, causing the plates to diverge at middle surges. That could be right. Um, the highest amounts of heat at the Earth's surface, that's automatically wrong because the highest amount of heat is not at the Earth's surface. Is cycled by convection in the lithosphere. No, that's not where convection happens. This is just very wrong. Higher amounts of heat in the inner core than the outer core transfer heat to the mantle, causing plates to diverge at trenches. A trench is formed by convergent. So that's out. Higher amounts of heat in the mantle than in the outer core. That's wrong because the outer core is hotter than the mantle. Causing plates to converge. Yeah. So that, that section of the 
thing is wrong. So this is one. So this was honestly pretty easy. That's a three out of 10. And honestly, like, we didn't even really need most of this to get that. It was kind of a weird choice of diagram to include. Okay, average age of Northern American, North American continental crust. Okay, so this is billions, so they're saying like 2.5, right? So that's the oldest continental crust, and then you could see the youngest is around like this edge right here, mostly. And up here is 1.8, 2.5, 1.8, so... All right, let's see. Based on the evidence, which statement identifies the pattern of the ages of crustal rocks in North America? Okay, the oldest rocks are found along the Gulf of Mexico? No, those are the youngest. The central region contains the oldest rocks, yes. The youngest rocks are found along the Atlantic and Pacific coast. Yeah, definitely. The oldest rocks are found in the Appalachian and Rocky Mountains. No, because the Appalachian Mountains have the youngest, so that's wrong. Rocks of the same age are found along the entire coastline of North America. So that would mean the whole outside. So that's wrong, because there's... 0.6 over here and like 2.5s over here. So that question was real easy in my opinion. So we're going to go with that's like a 2 out of 10. That's literally the answer is just in the picture. You don't even need background knowledge for that. The maps below show the distribution of continents 130 million years ago. Water flux is the amount of water flowing into the Earth's mantle at subduction zones. Okay. White subduction zones indicate less water flux, while black subduction codes, uh, zones indicate greater water flux. Okay, so let's just look. So water flux, we're saying this is water that's going into the Earth. So it's like getting sucked into the, the mantle, essentially. So you could see present day... We have that water flux, 3.5 times 10 to the 11th. And then as you could see, as we go further and further, we're going to have more water flux. So if more water is getting sucked into the earth, let's see, more water going in here. And then this would have less water going in. Okay. That's really all we can establish right there. After Pangaea broke up 130 million years ago, over time, the number of subduction zones on Earth's changed. This change to the geosphere created a feedback that causes changes to the hydrosphere. Okay, so they're saying pretty much subduction zones are the reason that there could be more water flux. So if there's less subduction zones, then there's going to be less water flux. Right? And there's less subduction zones because plate tectonics moves the continents in all different places. So you're going to change where the subduction zones are, how many there are. Use the information to make a prediction about how the hydrosphere changed as the, oh, and how this change affected the global sea level. Okay, so hydrosphere change, right? So there's going to be more water in present day because of less water flux. So less of it's getting sucked into the mantle, right? So we're going to have more here. So predicted sea level change, sea level had to go up. So we have higher sea level now because less of it's getting sucked down into the mantle. So honestly, easy question, but weird wording with the water flux thing with the numbers. I don't know. It's kind of weird. Uh, I'd probably say this is like a six. It's just, again worded in a way that can really cause a lot of confusion all right so there's another cluster done the next video that i put out will be the last cluster of this sample so i hope this is useful and good luck studying and i'll catch you on the next one